In this demonstration, I'm using the TerraTerm Terminal Emulation Program to get to the console command line interface of a 4321 router. I'll press Enter and then type Enable, and then I'll use the Show Version command from within Privilege Exec Mode to view information about the router. At the top of the Show Version command, I can see the Cisco iOS software version that is running on this router. This shows me that the router is running the Universal K9 image, which provides all the basic Cisco iOS software features, including support for strong cryptography. It is the Extended Maintenance Package, Major Release 16, Minor Release 6, and Rebuild Number 4. I can also see that the router has been up for four minutes. I'll press the spacebar to display more output. This tells me the name of the iOS image file and that it is located in boot flash memory. ISR 4300 refers to the hardware platform for which this image was built. You'll recall that I'm using a 4321 router. Again, here is the version for the iOS image file, and SPA means that the image has been digitally signed. The bin at the end of the file name refers to the file format. In this case, it is a binary file. Here we see the reason for the last reload. This indicates that I issued the reload command to restart the router. This information can be helpful when troubleshooting, especially if you have a router that crashes. Below is information regarding the cryptographic features of this router. I'll press the spacebar twice to display the rest of the output. Next we have information on licensing. It is broken up into two categories, suite licensing and technology package licensing. First, let's examine technology package licensing information. This indicates that we have a permanent license for the IP-based K9 package which is the default image feature set and the package and feature set that was specified when the router was ordered. It shows that it will continue to be available upon the next reboot. We currently do not have any other permanent or evaluation licenses installed. If we wanted to upgrade our iOS or install new features, it is a three-step process. First, purchase the software package or feature and obtain a product activation key or pack. Second, obtain a license using your PAC and the UDI of your device, or a unique device identifier. And then lastly, install the license. We could purchase a suite license that contains multiple features. If we did, that information would appear in this area. Next, we see that roughly 2 gigabytes of DRAM have been partitioned into main memory and shared memory. Main memory is reserved for the CPU to execute iOS software commands and also holds the running configuration and routing table, among other things. Shared memory is used to buffer data as it is transmitted or received on the network interfaces of the router. The contents of DRAM will be lost when the router is powered down. Next, we see the number and type of physical interfaces. This router has two gigabit Ethernet interfaces and two serial interfaces. Next, we have 32 megabytes of NVRAM, or non-volatile RAM, which is electronically erasable and reprogrammable. This is used to store the startup configuration file or saved configuration and the configuration register setting as shown at the bottom of this output. We'll get to that in a moment. The contents of NVRAM are retained when the device is powered down. Next, we see that the router has 4 gigabytes of physical memory. This is the total amount of DRAM, which includes the main and shared memory discussed above. Again, all contents are lost when powered down. Next, we have approximately 3 gigabytes of flash memory, used to store the Cisco IOS software image and other system files. Lastly, we can see the configuration register setting written in hexadecimal. This is the factory default setting which instructs the router to load the iOS image from Flash and then load the configuration file stored in NVRAM. But what if you forgot your password and cannot access your router? You can change the default boot process 
by altering the configuration register setting so that the configuration file won't load from NVRAM on boot up, allowing you to access privileged exec mode without a password. You can see that the show version command gives us basic information about the router, including the iOS version, how long the router has been up, and how much memory and storage the router has. This information can be helpful during troubleshooting or when upgrading your iOS.